Okay, so we're going to start off 9.4 um, with a little bit of review slash warm-up. Uh, if we just wanted to simplify, I don't know what's going on with my audio. Uh, if we just wanted to simplify uh, the following statements by foiling, you have t minus 8 times t plus 4. Just to remember from last chapter, foiling, you're going to take first times first. So t times t is t squared. Then the outside, which is 4t. Inside, negative 8t. And last, negative 8 times 4 is negative 32. Then we just combine some like terms. So t squared minus 4t minus 32. Remember here, x minus 7, don't make me cry. You don't bring the 2 in everywhere. You just take x minus 7 times x minus 7. Now you FOIL. You have x squared minus 7x minus 7x plus 49. That gives us x squared minus 14x plus 49. So if you notice with all of these, we're not solving anything. We're just simplifying. We're just FOILing things and making it look different. We honestly didn't really do anything. We just made it look different. So 9.4 deals with actually getting to solve some of these equations. <clears throat> so if we have something that looks like this, 0 equals x squared minus x minus 20, it's pretty close to impossible just to solve this by trying the typical methods of algebra that you've learned to this point. What you first need to do is get it in factored form, which looks something like this, which we'll talk about down the road. But the factored form of x squared minus x minus 20 is x plus 4 times x minus 5. If you don't believe me, you could FOIL this out and check your work, and you would get this result, basically doing the reverse version of what we did here. And the reason solving like this is much easier is because we can use the zero product property, which says that if a times b is equal to 0, then either a has to be equal to 0 or b equals 0. So here, if we're told that 5x equals 0, the rules of algebra would say, OK, let's divide both sides by 5. Well, when we divide both sides by 5, we just know that x has to be 0. Because 5 times something gave us 0, so either 5 has to be 0 or x has to be 0. But 5 can't be 0, so x has to be 0. Here we have x squared equals 0. Didn't know what that did. We have x squared equals 0. Um, what that means is x times x is equal to 0. So either x is equal to 0 or x is equal to 0. So x is equal to 0. Here, negative 3.089 times x squared equals 0. x has to be equal to 0 by the same um, train of thought as these first two. So notice that for all three of these, they all had the solution x equals 0. Because if you plug in x for, if you plug in 0 for x, excuse me, you're going to get a 0. So we're going to use that same method to solve these equations that are in factor form. So here, number one, you have x minus 2 times x plus 3 equals 0. Well, back to our zero product property, if you have a times b equals 0, then a equals 0, or b has to be equal to 0. So by that logic, that means here this would be our a, x minus 2, x plus 3 has to be our b. So that means either x minus 2 equals 0, or x plus 3 is equal to 0. Well, now this algebra is fairly straightforward. x is equal to 2, or x is equal to negative 3. So we actually get two answers when we're solving these. Where we're used to maybe just one answer, you might get two answers now. So look here, if we want to check our work, plug things in. <clears throat> we take 2 minus 2, that's 0. So 0 times 5, 2 plus 3, but 0 times 5 is still 0. Looking at it the other way, plug in a negative 3, 
negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5. So negative 5 times 0 is still 0. So both of these answers actually work. So we're going to do the same thing for all of these now, where we have either 2x plus 8 equals 0, or 3x minus 18 equals 0. So now 2x equals 4, negative 8. No, I got ahead of myself. So 2x equals negative 8, so x equals negative 4, or 3x equals 18, so x has to be 6. So once again, you do get two answers. And if you plugged either of these answers in, you'd find that you'd still get 0. Looking at something like this now, it still looks a little bit different, but we know that x plus 5 squared is just x plus 5 times x plus 5. So with that in mind, we know that x plus 5 equals 0, or x plus 5 equals 0, but that's really just the same thing. So x has to be negative 5. So here, notice, we only got one answer. Because our other option was x plus 5 equals 0. But either way, both on both options, we're going to get negative 5 as an answer. So you might get two answers, but you might only get one. Go ahead and try this one on your own. Some of these will become pretty obvious once you do a handful of them. Uh, go ahead and try this on your own. Pause the video if you'd like. Okay, so we're either going to have x minus 4 equals 0 or x minus 5 equals 0. Let's just try that again. So in this case, x is equal to 4, or x is equal to 5. So once again, you actually get two answers. <clears throat> okay, so let's go the other way. Here we're told to write a factored equation that would have the given numbers as solutions. So the process that we're going to do is the same thing as we did here, only we're going to start from what x equals and work back to a factored equation like that. So if our solutions are 7 and 8, that would mean x equals 7 and x equals 8. Okay, so that would mean x minus 7 equals 0 and x minus 8 equals 0. So now we can say x minus 7 times x minus 8 equals 0. And we're done. Notice if we worked backwards, we'd get right back to this point. So we can do this one the same way. x is equal to 9 and x is equal to negative 4. So x minus 9 equals 0. And then we have x plus 4 equals 0. So we're left with x minus 9 times x plus 4 equals 0. Go ahead and pause the video and try this last one on your own if you'd like. Okay, here we go. x is equal to 0, and then we have x is equal to 5. Well, x is equal to 0 is already set equal to 0, so we don't need to do much there. But we know x minus 5 is equal to 0. So our factored equation is x times x minus 5 equals 0. Because notice if we plug these in, if we plug 0 in, we get 0 times negative 5, that's 0. If we plug 5 in, 5 times 0, that's still 0. So here is our equation. <clears throat> okay, now we're going to look at something called factoring out the greatest common factor. So this is our first exposure to factoring. And what we're going to do here is we're going to think reverse distributing. So all of you are very familiar with the idea of distributing something. We actually saw it in the last uh, section. But here we're going to go the other way. We're going to pull something out. So we have a binomial 
um, 8x plus 12. We have to ask ourselves, what is the greatest common factor? So what is a number or a variable that 8x and 12 have in common? So this will come quicker with time, but we know that 8 is divisible by 2 and so is 12. Okay, so that 2 would work. We could factor out a 2. Is there anything bigger we could factor out? Well, yeah. 8 is divisible by 4 and so is 12. So we're going to factor this by pulling a 4 out. So we're going to have 4 times something. But what are we left with when we divide 8x by 4? Well, we're just left with 2x. What are we left with when we divide 12 by 4? Just 3. So the factored form, factoring out the greatest common factor of 8x plus 12, is 4 times 2x plus 3. And you can always check your work by distributing. If we distributed, we'd get 8x plus 12. Okay, let's look a little, little further. 12x plus 42y. Well, one term has an x, one term has a y, so we're going to have to leave those be. What about the numbers out in front? What about the coefficients? We have 12x and 42. Well, does 12 go into 42? Uh, no. But 6 would, and 6 goes into 12 as well. So we're going to factor out a 6. When we divide 12x by 6, we get 2x. 6 times 2x is 12x. We can divide 42 by 6, and we're left with 7, and then we're going to tack that y on there as well. So our factor form is 6 times 2x plus 7y. Once again, you can check your work by distributing. Okay, let's look at this third example. We have 4x to the fourth power plus 24x cubed. Well, it might be helpful to think about what this actually means. So I'm going to move this up, give us a little bit more room. 4x to the fourth is 4 times x times x times x times x. We're adding that to 24 times x times x times x. So now when we're thinking about factoring, we're asking, what do they have in common? Well, an obvious answer might be a 4. Good. So 4 and 24 are both divisible by 4. Now, what else could we factor out? Both terms have an x. Both terms actually have two x's. And in fact, both terms actually have three x's. So we're actually going to factor out an x cubed as well. Because x cubed does go into x to the fourth. When we do this factoring, if we take 4x to the fourth divided by 4x cubed, we're left with just x. When we take 24x to the cube divided by 4x cubed, we're left with just 6. So the factored form of 4x to the 4th plus 24x cubed is 4x cubed times x plus 6. Once again, you can check your work by distributing. Last one here. We have 14mb plus 35b squared. Well, as far as coefficients go, 14, 35, what goes into both of those numbers? 7 would. Now this first term has an m and a b. The next term has a b squared. So we can actually factor out one of those b's. Now we have to figure out what we're left with inside. 7 times something gets us 14. 2. We already factored out a b, so we're left with just m. 7 times something gets us 35. That's 5. We took out one b, but we also have a b left over because we have b times b to get b squared. So factoring 14mb plus 35b squared, we get 7b times 2m plus 5b. Okay, so let's factor, and then we're going to solve afterward on factoring, so we're combining both of the pieces from this video. We have 2x squared plus 8x equals 0. Let's first factor it. What's a common factor that goes in 2x squared and 8x? Well, 2x would, because 2x goes into 2x squared and 2x goes into 8. So we have 2x times x, 2x times x is 2x squared, plus 4. That equals 0. 
So now we have two pieces. We either have 2x is equal to 0 or x plus 4 is equal to 0. So that means x is equal to 0 or x equals negative 4. So both of these answers would solve this equation. Let's try another one. What's a common factor of 3s squared and negative 12s if we're trying to solve 3s squared minus 12s equals 0? Well, 3 goes into 3, 3 goes into negative 12. We have an s squared piece and we have an s. When we factor that out, 3s times s is equal to 3s squared. And we're left with just negative 4 because 3s times negative 4 is negative 12s. So now 3s equals 0 or s minus 4 equals 0. I apologize that my s's look like 5's. So 3s equals 0, so s has to be 0. S, equals, s minus 4 equals 0, so s has to equal 4. <clears throat> so plugging in 0, you'd get 0. Plugging in 4, you'd also get 0. You have two answers. For this one here, we're told a little hint to first set the equation equal to 0. So we're going to subtract 15n to both sides. So 6n squared minus 15n equals 0. Now we're playing the same game as we did above. 3 goes into 6 and 3 goes into negative 15. We have an n in both. So 3n times something gets you 6n squared. That'd just be 2n. 3n times something gets you negative 15n, which is going to be negative 5. So now 3n equals 0 or 2n minus 5 equals 0. So n is equal to 0 or 2n equals 5. So n equals 5 halves, which is the same as 2.5. So either n is equal to 0 or n is equal to 2.5. So if you have something like this, it might be at first helpful to subtract 15n on both sides, which is what I did. I just didn't show it in here. Set it equal to zero, factor out your greatest common factor, and solve your factored equation. And that is it for 9.1.